call the meeting to order. You can hear the uh, bell chime, yeah? But the paint job looks great. <laughs> they need to paint it shut. <laughs> <laughs> One of these times it will all come together. The clock will go, the bell will chime, and the paint is on the tower. <laughs> it will happen at some point. <laughs> all right. Uh, first order is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything they would like to add? I think we need to add once. I just got this mail on Friday. It's the contract documents for Bridge 33's Olivia Brook Road Bridge. Okay. Okay. So we okay with putting that down as order three of business? Mm -hmm. so, Lilliesville Bridge contract. All right. Anybody have anything else? I move to accept the minutes as amended. Second. Okay, I'll I mean, not the minutes, the agenda. Copies here. Yeah, should be copies of the agenda on the table. <clears throat> so we'll uh, we'll now open it up for public comment inquiry. If there's anything that isn't on the agenda for this evening, this would be the time to, to bring bring it forward. Um, just make sure when you do stand up that um, you make sure that you say your name so we have it for the record. So. Doug, anything? No. <laughs> Anybody else? Any anything? All right. Well, hearing none, we will move, move forward. We do have an appointment that's scheduled for six thirty. Um, he's here. Possibly. Yeah, he's, he's here. here. He's here. What, uh, <clears throat> does the board care to move forward with that now, being that the gentleman's here, or do we? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good with that. Okay. I've got a little something I put up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? I can't get my computer to work with the screen. We're having a problem I've been working on for. Oh, okay. yeah, that's what I've been working on, yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, it, it won't go. These two are not communicating. Okay. Okay. Well, I can just go from here. Now the time? Sure, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Rob McFadden. Um, I live over in Gaze, Little Pond, and I've uh, been there for 25 years now.
expecting success or I wouldn't be walking away from what I have right now as the aerospace sales engineer for Timken Corporation. Um, so I'm confident in this, but I don't want to surprise anybody. Um, my campaign is to pursue Vermont prosperity. And right now, the state has an incredible opportunity in front of us. If we don't seize it, it's going to shrink exponentially with every month that passes. And this, when House is back in session in January, um, that's the time to make something happen. And we're sitting here in a $57 billion a year industry emerging right now. That's, that's the numbers that are um, forecasted for 2027. So, Less than a decade from now. That's going to be the size of the industry. Cannabis is already legal in Vermont. We can sit back and not seize the opportunity and end up having a, a marijuana dispensary in a corner in every fifth half or so, just like we have um, you know, the, the liquor stores. Or we can seize this opportunity and leave this industry to locate here and break down all of the barriers and be the northeast leader in this $57 billion a year industry. And I'm passionate about it. I have the facts surrounding it. I have support. Um, people are actually, you know, friends and uh, people that are close to me are moving across the country to help with this right now. And so I have a pretty good vision. I'm going to launch it right here from Bethel. And so my intent is to serve my district first. And I would, you know, if, if things take off like I'm planning, I'd like to buy a location in here, here in, in downtown to, uh, uh, for campaign headquarters and then turn it into a commercial <coughs> location shortly after the election. Um, so I'd like your support. Those are my plans right now. I don't want to be blindsided by this because I'm expecting you know, a lot of traffic in town right now, shortly after the launch. And I'm going to have a launch over here at the new establishment in town, Babes, on uh, Thursday from 6 to 8. I'm bringing in uh, the taco trucks, the food trucks, uh, have some music, and I'm going to talk about my platform and try to grow on support. So, that's what I got. This is the first time I've talked about this publicly, so. <laughs> uh, hope you're all receptive to it. I um, want to do it either way, but I want to talk to you all about it and uh, make you as comfortable as you can about this. Um, and I hope I got some support, and if you guys can come out on Thursday, that would be great. Okay. All right? Thanks for the time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Be best to just send it to Greg at the town office, and he can he can get it sent out to everybody. to order one of the evening, which is, um, we were going to, we talked about in our meetings there earlier that, um, or we have been throughout the course of the year of doing monthly, uh, sitting down with a monthly budget. Um, we talked about it maybe about a month and a half ago about kind of doing a um, end budget review. So this is kind of an unofficial, unaudited budget review of how we just came out of our, our last budget. So that's what we want to kind of go through um, this evening. Um, 
I think the way I'd like to do it is, um, does everybody have on the board the, the unaudited? Mm -hmm. yeah, this is yep. So I think the, um, I think what we'd like to do, or what I'd like to do this evening is just go through the, the budget that we just came out of. I mean, not with every single line item, but uh, maybe just start with the revenue, talk a little bit about the revenue, um, what went good, what didn't, um, and maybe as we're talking through things, we can kind of uh, put it out there of maybe changes or perceived changes for the, for the up and coming budget. You know that we can look to uh, to make some uh, changes on that so um, I guess we'll just kind of open it up to the revenue side of things it means that's first um, you'll, well I mean um, if you break down the revenues I didn't have a chance to take the property taxes out of that number but we did we did come in and collect more revenue than we had budgeted um, and Teresa will be able to talk to that a little more in detail. Um, from looking at it, a majority of that was was uh, collecting some of the back taxes um, that had been lingering in the town for you know several years. We really put what was it about mid September, October? We really started yeah. when you came in in September, right? So that became a pretty big focus last year, and <clears throat> we had kind of budgeted on the town as our goal was to try and collect 50,000 of that back tax amount. Um, the unedited, audited um, number right now is about 141,000 that we were able to collect that was outstanding to the town. So, I mean, first, I, yeah, I think Teresa's doing an awesome job. Um, she's really got her, her thumb on, on all this. And, you know, so we were able to beat that by $91,000 on the delinquent tax amount. I guess probably one thing I probably should have asked it. Do you know where we're sitting right now, delinquency taxes today? Well, at the end of 2018, we would have had, including interest in penalty, we were all $292,000 as of the end of June. $292,000? Yeah, and some of this I know is a property. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see some money there from tax. We've seen about four months. So we just, I can, I can figure out what we're going to do. So I was going to say that number. <clears throat> that number is going to look better after the tax sale. Obviously. But we were sitting at, when we went to the voters, or when we talked about it in town meeting day, we were sitting around 400000 in delinquent taxes. So right now we're, we're in the 292. So. And it's tough, too, because you, know, you have to remember that <clears throat> Assuming they happen in the same year, which right, which is hopefully what you feel. Yeah, exactly. 
we don't, we'll pull the out as a repayment. So we'll end up pulling it out. Hopefully, yeah, in this case, I know the, um, I know that the Homeland Security Director Fire Department was spent, I know the cost program was spent, and the government. Uh, Okay. So, yeah, and also reflected the current use, like the taxes, so it also means to reflect the penalty and interest that people are paying their delinquent taxes. Um, and they're also paying, you know, the interest on penalties. So, what I did, Chris, is I just took out what we paid in school and then that grant, the $24,661, and came up with $2.2 million. Okay. Because you were asking me on the phone about that. Right. And then I did one in the total, too, if you asked about it. But um, the other thing we overcollected is called proceeds of debt, which is we have recovery zone economic development bonds, and you can write to the IRS, and <coughs> they will refund you a portion of your interest, and that really varies depending on sequestration rates and things like that. But, So overall, I think that you did, did well, I mean, as far as you know, because you met most all your projections. Right, I was just trying to, I hadn't put the number in there before, but we were, it looks like, we had budgeted for 413,000 in local revenues, and we ended up coming in at about 603,000, does that sound about right? Yeah. Of which ninety-one thousand of that was, well, well, ninety-one thousand was above and beyond the tax collection delinquencies. And we'll put a number in for current property taxes this time. We haven't done that, so we'll put in a number this time. So it looks crazy because we don't put a number for school tax. We don't put a number for current property tax. So this is all your expenses. Right. You have to go back and delete them out. <laughs> Good. Um, Did anybody have any questions in regards to the revenue end of things? If you want, I can just go through my way. I can go through the expenses, not like just as a group. Yeah, I was just thinking maybe just kind of um, a higher level overview of each department. Sure. Um, it looks like, you know, road. I mean, when anything kind of sticks out, which. Yeah. Well, the road department ended up would have been fine, would have come in under budget, but because um, someone had only budgeted fifteen thousand dollars for the two thousand eleven interest on that bond, which was actually twenty one thousand, there was a big difference right there. Um, which which one are you talking about? At the very end of other public works, at the very end, like in top of page four, I mean flood interest. Oh, four. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know. Yep. Yeah. But for the most part, I mean, all the budgets for the highway came in great. I mean, one that was obviously a big job of higher service equipment, which is on page three, and that was because we had to pay Dylan McCullough almost 13000 for plowing, but we had one truck after another that was down for weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. So, but other than that, you know. Yeah, I was going to say public works looked like it came in. Came in great. Um, right on target. Yeah. My, other than the breakdowns and the hired services that we had to render yeah, in the winter. Yeah, the overall total public works budget, he, you know, he came in just barely over and really 6,500 of that was out of his control because that was the interest on the note that mm -hmm. had budgeted properly. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so he did fine. But a lot of these come to credit of, you know, now the system of actually having the department heads come in and code their own Right. Bills. I mean, they're actually seeing what they're spending. Right. And using right. amortization budget here. But um, the fire department, he did fantastic. Um, it looks like he's over budget, but he's not because he had a homeless grant. grant as an expense here for forty-two thousand dollars. Right. Um, and then he also had a grant for twenty-four thousand dollars for the Um, so 
We can just update Greg's uh, uh, all animals will go to Greg's house. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we voted on it. <laughs> so that was. I just want to just some of these I mean some of these were under uh, came in under budget and you know that's always good but we should probably raise the question of why did it and, you know is it an anomaly for one year that you know even though we budgeted a certain amount this year was that really the number and something threw that mm -hmm. off that because um, you know last thing we want to do is under budget it and then next year have it be over right? exactly. a period so like and it looked like most of it was um, some staff and labor came under, um, yeah, which, will happen for which was like the pretty close because staff, labor, supplies, and chlorine look to be like the bigger yeah. heavy hitters there. That and don't forget any expenses that come in. We have one more accounts payable round that's going to affect this because any expenses that come in by the end of August, the long and June will go back. Yeah. So have a little bit of a go in there, but some of it is going to be, as I said, publicly. Again. Because even with this budget that we're just ending with, only, well, only maybe a third or a little more than a third of that budget was with both of you in the office. Right, yeah, I think mean, so. You know, and coding and things, I mean, there was. Well, it wasn't until we had October, November, was I think it was Right, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe yeah. half, half right. of it. Though. So, um, which is great. And it was sometimes So, Teresa, dumb question. The uh, parking lot of electricity, mm -hmm. if you look at that one, is that just a question of something didn't get coded correctly or didn't, it's changed, something has changed? Just uh, as an example. Yeah, it could have been that there was uh, a repair. That was a repair. Yeah, there was some lighting. Oh, okay. um, because yeah. there was the street lights. I don't know if it was, if it came out of this budget, and that thing did. We wanted to leave it very good down here. Okay, okay. yeah. 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 Okay. So that's maybe something we'll look at in this next budget. You know, in a repair category or something. A little bit, right, exactly. a little bit of money in there for okay. repairs. Okay. Oh, just, just for an example. Well, and that's some of the stuff too. Is yeah. now that we're coding things in correct areas, there might be some of these areas that look like we didn't spend anything when everything else got coded to a correct area that. Looks like it ran over or something. Mm -hmm. so. so some of the other things in the parks and public places that were the, the portalet, um, got some shoveling, you know, that we paid someone to do, and, and um, so that was so that, that like that falls under the public places still came in under budget. There's some stuff that had to move around. That stuff kind of falls under the other category. Under the other, yes. Mm -hmm. so like, yes. Have to have some, okay. Yeah. As we figure out what it is.
special one, which would take all of that. It would take salary, it would take like the many um, health insurance, you know, obviously workers' comp retirement, all that stuff would push it over. Um, insurance premiums went up on buildings, so we have a little bit of that. Um, and if you look at it, it's 36000 over the estimate, but between, well, 30000 of that 36000 is just the um, town clerk and the adjustment in the health insurance. Right. You also had Gina Camp working at the same time right. for a little while, so, you know, her training is yeah. obviously, you know, Gina has some knowledge. So, you know, some of these things are just like bread from Now, town hall was under budget, probably because it was under revenue as well. Is that? Well, then, you know, is that kind of the? Because he was over, electric was over. We didn't spend the total for the painting of the clock tower either. Right, we had ten million. That was eight thousand dollars. Yeah, that ten thousand dollars in building repairs should get spent. So that's why. So if the painting was on this past year's budget, did, did it get moved to? Moved it the, to okay, the so it did. It did yes. get moved. Okay. Do you think, I know you and I talked a little bit earlier, I mean, it's kind of one of those things, abatement, should you be budgeting a number for abatements? I mean, it. some people will say, no, you shouldn't, but then you got to think, we do abate things all the time. So <clears throat> one thing I talked about was maybe going back and see what our three or five year average is. Exactly. And then maybe we can plug that in as, you know, if our average is 5,000, we put that in there. Either that or to say we're not abating anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You don't have any budget, so I'm sorry. So, if, so when we have a BCA, you know, grievance on taxes and whatnot, sometimes you know they go yeah. one way or the other. Right. But that would come into fall into that. Yeah. Uh, basket. So maybe if we could just take a look. At, I mean, maybe that. And we may. It's we. It's the same as it was last year. So it's a hundred. Yeah. 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 Which. I, I think if I had to guess, it's in the thousands every year. You know. Right. I would think so. If you go back and look at the last, yeah, we'll take a look. I guess think abatements are you know, right. two thousand or five thousand or more. So would uh, just um, I mean just the, the projected. Last year. Yeah. I mean just, just the last just the year. Just the projected. At the, was at the end of a. No. 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 Not this one. But I mean we might just looked at fifty seven hundred dollars last year. Yeah. So we'll take a look at this. I guess. So. The other thing that was your legal bill, we budgeted fifteen cents. Um, 
And I know legal was one of the, we increased legal for this current year's mm -hmm. budget that we're in now, which I think was 25,000, is that, yeah, that sounds... what we went to? Yeah. Um, so okay. that would have been closer. Of course, legal is one of those things that, again, yeah. you know, it could be nothing or it could be a big number or, or somewhere in the middle. And yeah. it's kind of hard to, uh, exactly. and in the auditing um, services? Yep, so auditing, you know, is you didn't have a room for them, they assigned a room now, Low 20s. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were they were looking at trying to play catch up from previous years, yeah. as well as as well as you know the office over there was you know when they came in they had to do a lot of work that they probably shouldn't have yeah, had. Exactly to do. right. They shouldn't have had to do. And then there was stuff that they had to help me Right. So, um, but the good news is we won't see that. You know, we'll, we know next year what the number is. Anything above that, they just write off. And we talked about legal and auditing services at town meeting day. Yeah. And that, and if I remember right, at town meeting day, that, you know, that had blown, or that had increased the budget by, yeah. it was almost like a cent and a half on our tax rate. Just, you know, we're spending it, now we're going to budget for it. Um, right. And, you know, I mean, here we are. Here we budgeted forty thousand for those services, and it ended up coming in somewhere around seventy-eight, seventy-nine thousand. So. So hopefully we don't have a repeat of that. I know we won't with the opening, and hopefully not with legal. Um, advertising is over, but you know, when you have a DRB, uh, you're advertising for my job, you're advertising for road crew positions, town clerk, select board. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's yeah. Like um, so if you have one with other groups, the big number, ninety-two hundred. I think what's, you know, when we talked about this again at town meeting days, and we have at some of the other board meetings since, is what's important is to make sure that, especially this year, like we did an excellent job of collecting back taxes. Right. Um, and, you know, net, net wise, we came out 48,000 as of right now, unaudited um, ahead. But we also still have work to do. And, you know, I, did, I don't want to get, if we take the budget that we not really everybody here had designed and worked through, um, 
but if you take the budget that we had gone through, we're about seventeen thousand dollars, seventeen eighteen thousand dollars off of where our target was, um, which is uh, it's almost one cent on the on the tax rate. Right. That's the whole thing. I mean, it's a whole different, a whole different viewpoint of how the department heads are put on the spot. You know, it's a, they know what they're spending, they know what their budget is, they know, right. and and they're being looked at closer. And <clears throat> it's a whole different attitude. You know, my expectation is, and I, I will say that if you're going to overspend one money, you figure out how you're going to understand another. So. Okay. I mean, I guess the way I look at it is, um, personally, what I'd like to see is, um, is, is to take the ninety-one, the $91,000 of extra tax collections that was above and beyond the budget. I personally would like to see that get designated out to the voters to vote on. And then what that does then is it, do, it does set us in a, a negative budget deficit um, that then can be retired in our next budgeting season correctly. Is well, I mean, it, Robin Peter, <laughs> Robin Peter, yeah. well, it, you are, but you're, but you're identifying, you're clearly, um, you're clearly putting it out there what exactly you know, because we can all, you know, we've seen that commercial in the football there with the monkeys and the, the arrows pointing down, and then one of the monkeys flips the, the graph up, and then the, it points upwards, and they're all cheering. But, I mean, we could, we, I mean, it's great that we came in $40,000 ahead. But our budget itself that we worked with didn't. Right, but we also you know, have to, we also, the other number that we will need to add to that is to see what is our undesignated fund balance. Like right now, we, that was still in the hole. Right. So, okay, so at this point, it's very preliminary to suggest that we do anything back to the no. voters. You know, it's always wonderful to do it with an offset tax by 10 grand or whatever. But at this point, um, you know, without having that number off the top of my head, my, my, my advice would be to leave it. what Fred right. said from Sullivan and Powers, which is that it needs to build a small, undesignated fund balance. Mm -hmm. Because of what we know, our main rate, like that's sometimes the wheels just come mm -hmm. off the bus. And instead of having to go to the voters every single year and say, okay, we do a shortfall of 10 or 15, you, you can make that up out of that as a fund balance if you have one. And then, but you know, as that builds, and you, all, you know, always vote to offset taxes. You know, we certainly do that. Now, I came mean, from 10, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, whatever the undesignated fund balance was, you take a portion of that. Right, but you know, I mean, I again, yeah, I mean, I, I think the way that I, I look at things is the over collected revenues um, should be put in its own undesignated fund, um, and then that's up to the select board and the voters to decide if we are going to leave it in there or if we're going to vote on to see what we're going to. Um, put that towards, and, and and probably the most logical thing is to keep it in, in and build that. Because I think he said, what do we, we need like maybe a quarter million or something? Yeah. What we should have in there, um, rather than having to borrow from the banks every once in a while. Um, but we also need we also need to identify that we had a negative, uh, or we had a deficit in the budget, and we should retire that deficit. Right. Because so retiring maybe we were over I understand that. Yeah. But if you know, I, I mean, you can't. You can take your. You can take your ninety-one thousand dollars. Yeah. Granted, if you don't have ninety-one thousand dollars, it's forty-eight, right? <laughs> However, you can balance that ninety-one minus 
48, right. and you can take that difference and you can use that as a deficit retirement. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we did we have a deficit. And, and you're already budgeted for deficit. You had $25,000 in here as an mm -hmm. expense to offset. Right. So there was also that expense, which you, you budget as an expense, because you don't actually use the money. You just hold by that you're, you're inflating what you're you know, collecting. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so, so I understand exactly what you're saying. I, I understand your thought process. And I just think clearly, I mean, yeah, we, we won't. We want to be as transparent as possible, and I think oh, because quickly someone can do the math and say, well, you took in 91000 extra dollars, and you only came up 48 ahead, so, so what, happened? what happened to the rest of the money? Right? It's pretty easy yeah, to figure that out. And a good portion, I think that's one of the reasons, the other reasons that Fred said, mm -hmm. that Lizzie said about paying a leave time to things like that, stuff that we yeah. you know, don't build into the actual mm -hmm. budget mm -hmm. budget. No, I, I agree. We we need to keep some money, and I think the magic number is around a quarter million. That should be in our account. Uh, but I think if we go with the voters and say, you know, we collected ninety one thousand extra in revenue, and we had a deficit in the budget of X, and this is why. You know, I, I think that's you know speaking for myself, but the board you know can weigh in as well. And we always have. Because if not, we're just doing the same thing that we've done in the past. Yeah. Except for this time, we came out ahead, you know. And right. in the past, they just kept moving along, and we were upside down and moving along, and all of a sudden, well, we got to retire this deficit, right. you know. So. No, I, I so. I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing when we're in the positive and having to figure yeah. out how we do that, rather than being the negative. But. You know. And we got, you know, we got another budget to put together, which. Really, this budget won't even be our first budget because we're still working through some of the past yeah, so budgets and costs that. Well, and, yeah, exactly. We built it the best. Yeah. We built it off from doing some, a lot of work and going back and looking to see what the expenses were. But as I said, we get, we're going to get through a lot of that stuff and all of the things that are skeletons are going to come out mm -hmm. of the closet and we're going to realize what we need to do. I mean, the budget that we just started in July was, was a good budget. You know, we certainly did our due diligence. And were there any things, Greg, that I know we were looking pretty tight at that budget in June and you know, trying not to do anything else we absolutely had to do it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we probably should have done that we didn't get to or you know, just because of trying to balance the budget that Oh, I think it's a little too early to figure that out. I think we have to see how things go. Um, you know, I think really what we need to do is Figure out paying up our line items and maybe get a capital improvement plan in order. Uh, we've got a couple, we've got a variety of plans, we know what we're going to do there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to figure out what we're going to do with our, our facilities and some of our accounts. Um, I mean, there were things that were, were omitted from that budget to make it work, but it, it's okay. Had it not been able to do it, you know, straight away. But you feel confident that some of the things that may not have gotten, we so will far, get it in this current budget that we're just starting? So far. And it's very, very early, but um, I think we're okay. And there are a few things that we, we may know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
focusing on capital budgets um, right now and um, had taken over the water sewer building. So we've been working with Greg and Tim about that as far as making sure that we, you know, we have some things come to light that we use. Um, we also, since the ordinance did pass this last tax, so we're going to tax bill or excuse me, water and sewer bill that went out. Chris now has left the ordinance so that if you are a commercial user, you no longer qualify for vacancy rate. So that really changed a lot of people's bills. So that came out along with the increase in the water rate also came out at this time. So working on that. So we're certainly trying to make sure that we're collecting, billing and collecting everything that's good. Um, and also working on, you know, capital budgeting and things like that. But um, so yes, Greg and I and Tim and the department is, you know, they admit we had But to your question, as far as this year and the budget we're working at, yeah. things that were short, uh, I, don't, I mean, nothing is going to die at this point. No. The, the, no so no things, I haven't heard anything from any of the employees that, that they're not getting something or, or, or expecting something they're not seeing. Well, I'm just I use an example of, you know, tightening up on, let's say, putting gravel down on certain roads that we right. didn't, and maybe we just graded instead of put gravel down. You know, I, just something like that, but I didn't know. Exactly. What do you think? How about um, water and sewer? For the fiscal year then? Sure. Okay. I mean, it looks like they came in for 3 4% high from budgeted. Um, we don't really have any information to see how that is uh, over a period of time because mm -hmm. I'm just doing this. But, um, <coughs> so, yeah, so sewer. Because you got sewer was about about nine thousand. Yeah, yeah. Over. And some of that, of course, there was a grant revenue. Uh, well, you can see that. About both of them, nine thousand. Sewer shows in the grants for revenue is a grant. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But there's also engineering. But yeah, they still end up coming out ahead. Okay. Um, you know, Tim has been at this a long time. I, I think he does a good job of managing his budgets and managing. Yep. Um, um, we did do some equipment and some sludge disposal as well, which is what we ended up um, doing some of that this year in the current fiscal year. So we did some at the end of the year and some of the current year. Mm -hmm. So overall, no no debt? Nothing that, you no. know, I mean, I came mean, out pretty super close. Super budget were already in rough shape anyway, so not that they came up ahead this year was good. Same thing with water. Um, I mean, again, with these, is there anything that so, didn't show up in here that could have, that we avoided, you know, um, type deal? Well, I'm sure with Tim, I mean, I'm sure that with the water sewer, there's always, uh, you know, there's always maintenance for the system. Mm -hmm. right. That you're always trying to decide, you know, triage, basically. Can it be repaired or is it, you know, Cause it, something we can repair is it have to be And I think we, we just finished up the, uh, the wastewater assessment that we did, um, that we had done. And that allowed us to prepare for some of these items too. If you look in there, you see that, um, like, the maintenance, uh, maintenance equipment. Yeah. That's double, and that's, that was a bad idea to pump it went down. But what this analysis did was provide us with the useful items equipment so we could prepare a capital improvement plan and, and budget for that instead of just having the county this in the face. So right. that's, you know, the intent is to hopefully get ahead of these things before they actually break down. So between the analysis we did with the, the sanitary sewer and then we've got the water master plan company as well, mm -hmm. that allow us to create uh, these capital improvement plans yeah. to hopefully um, stop some of this over expenditure, expenditure of these line items on things that we've already got already planned. Yeah, we're uh, just kind of triaging. We are. It's really yeah. nice. It's all reactive for sure. And the other was the labor. So the, the labor was a little high because we had, um, with the new personnel policy, it, it only allows for so much carryover of the vacation time. And we had a couple of employees that had extra vacation time they had been granted in the past. We didn't bring them down to where they were supposed to be. So we had to pay them out mm -hmm. to get them down so that they, yeah. they could get their vacation time uh, and meet that requirement within the personnel policy. And that happens to where then 
See, the sewer was the opposite. <clears throat> yeah. so there was a sewer. And then under both the water and the sewer, there's there's items in there for auditing services. Yep. Now, do yep. those that, that just not get coded, or does that just all fall under the town's portion? It all falls under the town's portion because I don't. So maybe we take those out going yeah, forward? Or? I mean, I suppose you could write a check from the water sewer to the general fund. Um, I guess I, I could ask Fred. Because we had budgeted eight thousand, right? But there's eight thousand dollars that was budgeted for those two identities for auditing services that did that no cost hit that, so that's eight thousand that came out of the taxpayers. But it's not sure it's necessarily they out that eight thousand because I don't know. Right. Right. Maybe going forward, how we should budget for that. like Anticipated that didn't happen is a hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, between those two, to figure the difference. Yeah. So they, um, but the RTS has this and certainly check. And um, so, like I said, they did. I'm sure you know they said budget wasn't built around and writing off some bad debt, but I think it was smart to do that to get off the books and then they collect it. They'll just come in later as a revenue. So it makes sense. For Um, when we go back to water, Greg, where, um, question that's popped in my head, where are we at with the water assessment? I know last time we were like 95% or? Mm -hmm. So it's, the final draft is at the state review. Um, so everything is basically over there. We just have to give their final lesson. Well, we, are we feeling good that we'll get the information back in a timely manner that we can budget in this coming I budget? So. I think we'll see. I think we'll see the final document probably in the next two months. That'll give, uh, give us time. We've already actually have already spoken numerous times about which projects need to go to what order. We've kind of already uh, went through all that uh, and prioritized all that. So we've got a real good handle on what we're going to be moving forward. So uh, I think we'll be fine. I mean, we, should, we should see a final draft, like I said, within probably no more than two months.
you're always budgeting out 18 months. You really can't project that one's obviously been in a situation where they've been sitting on, you know, running a deficit and we're still finding things. Mm -hmm. um, I think the big focus of the board should really be um, growth in the grant list. Because obviously Absolutely. if we have a two, three percent increase in tax rate, there's any growth in the grant list is gonna help offset that. Mm -hmm. So we have had some property sell recently, which is great. Um, hopefully you'll see it uptick in building permits, that sort of thing. Um, but I pulled the lid off, you know, I, I asked her she, she said she would. Yeah. So I think that would be, you know, they had some great information and, and Lindley certainly being a business owner now is a good handle on this. Right. Well, and a, just a quick update on that. I actually last weekend spoke with our state's um, economic development commissioner and started a conversation with her about um, just sort of first steps to actually be able to do that presentation of what are what are some of the options we can present to the board as, okay, here's what we as a town can do in the position we're currently in. So I'm starting that conversation, but it's it's a slow-moving well, thing for now. Well, I know the town of Bethel has, um, you know, we're kind of handicapped when it comes to developing future lands because, you know, we don't have a lot of development opportunities, but, you know, the organic growth end of things of what we do have and right. um, being more efficient with what we do have and bringing people in is probably the, I would think would be a large focus for that. Well, it kind of goes hand in hand with your thought about reviewing the town properties. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if we, I don't know what's the board feel with, I mean, I think mainly it was just to discuss what we just went through and, you know, just like we did, we brought up, you know, in the conversation there were several things that maybe we'll look at budgeting a little different next time, you know, and, um, I mean, I think we're, we're definitely heading in the right direction when it comes to coding our cost so we know what it actually costs us to do business in different departments. Um, and it sounds like our department heads, now that they have been empowered to uh, be leaders in their departments, are showing that by their budgets coming in um, on target, uh, which is good to see. So. going to have to look at, um, like you and I were talking about today, we'll have to look at, you know, we've been, you know, usually in a budget you should not be budgeting for collecting right. back taxes. And so, you know, where our town has gotten in that position to put in the budget to collect back taxes. And now we need to, we need to be, move that number down. And you will always, you will um, continue to move it down. But we can't do it in one year either, because if, if if you budget fifty thousand dollars in revenues, that doesn't happen. No. Then, then that's you know two and a half cents on your on your list. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. But we'll have to probably just offset that with some of our costs and things to balance that, right. not and affect the taxpayers. Right. I think the budget that we're now, we're not sure how we're going to reduce it, but you'll continue to reduce that. There will always be some sort of 
number yeah. because you'll, you'll never be oh. you know, always fully but, but it definitely yeah. is not going to have to be this high. And yeah. you know, I'm not always going to be coming in at 140,000 or anything like that. So, but I think this year will be good because once the tax sale happens, you know, some of these old lingering big numbers, the $50,000 or more, some of those properties are finally going to get cleared off. Yeah. So, Anybody from the board have any questions in regards to the budget, where we're at? No, I think we're just definitely headed in the right direction, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Any comments from the crowd? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Therese. Thank you. So we will move on. Agenda item number two, 157 Dark Hill reclassification. Let Greg uh, get us up to speed with that. Sometimes if you turn the, if you turn the, some, I have a new laptop. Oh. It just doesn't. I know sometimes when I have it work, if if I turn the laptop on before the Elmo, then it doesn't work or whatever. It is. So that's the that's all the criteria. Yeah, he didn't come out. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Brown, Brown, Sean. All right, well, I'll go through it. We'll just go through it first. All right. So, um, so there are a list of, of seven or eight different items here that are in our code uh, for a that have to be met. The criteria that have to be met for the town to take the road. And this is it's a little bit hard to. Uh, to deal with it because this is this is an existing road that's been there for a long time. These this criteria is really written because it's in the art or zoning ordinance. It's really written for like a new road. Um, but it's the closest thing we have to criteria. So it's, it's basically the, the criteria that when they were writing the ordinance or they were writing the, the zoning that they the the uh, the board and those that were writing that wanted to see 
seen these, these minimum requirements in that. So that's why I use these. Uh, we haven't got any standards for an existing road. It's just, it's just nothing out there. So uh, this is the closest thing that I can find to what, what the town, I felt the townspeople and the, uh, the board would like to see what they do. So right away, uh, you know, it goes through the right away, it goes through the actual specifications, the gravel, um, drainage, width, things like that. Um, how intersections are supposed to um, come into a kind of road, what the intersections should look like, and how big they should be, the grade of the road, and then the dead ends on the road. So those are the, some of the criteria that we have to look at. Um, first one is, the, if you go to the first page, it has a white map on it with a red line. Uh, this is a very simple slide, basically. Uh, this came from our tax maps, um, and it shows that there is indeed a right of way there. It's a 50 foot right of way or 49 and a half foot right of way um, that currently uh, exists on this road. This is a class 4 road, has been a class 4 road for a long, long time. Uh, so we, so uh, the, the road does meet that first criteria of a 50 foot right of way. Uh, the next slide is the entire. So, uh, under the road construction specification criteria, there are multiple items underneath that. Um, the first one is the entire roadbed is to be clear of debris. And uh, as you see from the picture there, the entire road is open. Uh, there are no trees, no stumps, things like that that are, that are within that roadbed uh, that would cause any issues with plowing the road or, or with traffic flow or anything like that. Uh, so that, that criteria was met. The next one uh, you'll see is the roadbed to be a minimum of 24 feet wide. Uh, I went out and measured a couple areas and it's shown there. The, I hope the red line came out mm -hmm. on the picture. Okay. Uh, so I went out and I measured a couple areas and I got 16 feet at one spot and I got 18 feet at the widest spot. So uh, that is a, so the road does not meet the 24 foot width. Um, it, it's simply 18, 16 to 18 on average. Um, a couple areas that I checked. Um, Both have to have a minimum of 18 inches of gravel. This is where you probably have a different opinion than I do. Uh, I went and I looked. Um, you can see on one of the pictures, uh, I, I measured six inches of gravel on the top. And in another area, you kind of just smushed out to one to three inches. I don't know how much actual real road, you know, hard pack type gravel is on that road. Thank you. 
you don't always have it. If everything's going on cheap and one side of it. But um, for the most part, we didn't, I didn't see a real distinct ground growth, so it did not meet that criteria. Um, the, the next criteria was the intersection is to be at a maximum of 3% slope after we approach. Um, it's really close. I think we're right at three, probably a little bit more, but I think it's enough to, that it's, it's safe. Um, what they do for this is they, they would like to have a road as it needs another road to be somewhat flat so that you're not at a steep angle coming down on ice and, and going into the intersection. Uh, the maximum is three percent. I think we're I think we're at about three percent. I don't think it's, it's if it's over, it's not far enough over that it could really be a danger, especially with the traffic flow that's on the road. Um, so it does mean that. Um, the, uh, the next one is the, the road grade should not exceed 8%. Um, this one again is a little close. I said it does not, it does not exceed that, so it meets the criteria. Uh, there are a couple spots where it's pretty steep in there, but it's not, I don't think it's beyond 8%. Really. Uh, I don't actually have a piece uh, of survey equipment, so I couldn't really determine that exactly. But just driving it and knowing what, you know, what a road is and what the roads and boundaries look like. Some of the grades in our roads were not as it didn't see any of the other roads that we had in town. So I am safe um, assuming that it meets that 8% grade. Uh, the last one is, is kind of a big one. Um, the code says that cul de sacs should be constructed at the closed end of a roadway. So anytime we have a roadway and it, it dead ends, essentially, there should be some sort of turnaround or a cul de sac or something like that constructed. So the truck can, can get in there and you can turn around and you're plowing and things like that. Um, this does not have that. Did this picture print that has a big circle? I'd say probably your last three or so. Okay. Yeah, we so I've drawn in um, sort of the area. I'll have to show everybody. This the road actually continues that way. Mm -hmm. So there is a spot that we could you know we could possibly put a, a turn, but that's is that up at the top or? The yes, the, so they go up here, the house is up here. Oh, okay. Our road, the road actually continues, I think it's a class four trail, continues yeah. this way. Mm -hmm. So there's possibly a spot that it could be put in right there. Um, so I don't know if you can see that. Um, the road goes up to the house right here and then mm -hmm. it continues this direction, the actual right mm -hmm. way does. And that would be kind of the potential turnaround area. Um,
the gravel requirements, no problem. That's just the fantastic gravel that's in there. Um, the stones are not too large. Again, it's because it's, it's a very um, consistent base that they're using. Um, gravel surface shall be compacted in, in a 2% crown. It does not meet the 2% crown requirement for the whole roadway. Uh, the intersection is okay at 3%. The maximum grade is okay at 8%. And the, again, the big one is it doesn't have a turnaround on the end, so it doesn't meet the requirement for the, the dead end of the site. Um, so that was kind of a real quick nitty gritty, uh, just kind of based on what, what requirements we have in our code. Um, you know, there, there are, I think, one driveway or two. There's one other driveway that served off of this road. One, one that served, and then uh, it's the other one. He, he doesn't use it. The only time he ever used it was in the uh, storm. Right. So we really had two kind of active driveways, if you will. Do we, um, <clears throat> question, one question I have, you might not have this information, but between, between the monies that we would collect for Class 3 road versus an estimated maintenance cost for that road, do you happen to have what that would look like? No, uh, I can tell you the road is, is a quarter mile. Um, it's, the, I don't have the actual number. I can tell you that the uh, maintenance cost, you're talking probably, when I wrote that with Alan and we talked about if we had a turnaround and all that, it would take him 15 minutes to plow, to plow, to turn around and do what they got to do. Um, you know, they hit that two, three times during the storm, depending on the storm, of course. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell. Well, you have, you know, you have plowing, you have sanding, right. you, have you have plowing, you have sanding, you have grading, grading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then just miscellaneous other. Just like Dang. the road, honestly, it's, we're not going to make enough money on it to, to pay what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, we don't, we don't do that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a well built road, I think. I haven't dug down and done any little exploratory borings of any kind, but it seems to be a, a well built road. My only real concern are the lack of the turnaround and the width of the road. Oh, we, we would have to put the turnaround in. Time we'll put the time well, the way we, the if we the way the code reads is as if as if this was sort of a development, I guess. Um, the developer or the owner would, would do all the or build everything, and then the town would take it over for maintenance. That's the intent, anyway. Is that the town typically won't take anything unless it meets all of our requirements? Right. So the rock lining, the turnaround, the crown. All that stuff would be would have to meet the class three requirements to take requirement before the town right. would take it over. Right. Does anybody on the board have any further questions? Did I miss anything? That was pretty fast. I didn't really know what it was. The only thing that I might issue is still, you did a great job on on Guard Hill, but yeah, just the other day. And somebody coming along there about 50 miles an hour, and I said, all of a sudden he saw me. Well, I'm smart enough to stop at the end of that road. But he, you know, somebody's going to go over that thing. And when they do, they just want to know. Well, we're looking at doing guardrail, but it takes a special piece of equipment and a lot of money to do it. What's this guy's going to do? But we can't, we don't have a machine to do it. It's a, it's a thing that pushes the, the pile down there, and we just can't do it. So we've got another bridge that we're going to be doing the same thing on. So most likely, um, we'll be doing, we'll probably be getting further up there. So we can do it. If we do, we win our It's out of our expertise in our program. Don't go slow down.
just the way the giant is done. It's built a lot of houses and a lot of things are done on I got a question, Greg. That's that 16 foot. Uh, is there ample place for the snow to get pushed off in that narrow place, or? They've been doing it for 60 years or more. Yeah. So the the yeah. nice thing about the road is that one side of it pretty much just falls away. Um, there's some trees in the way, but they're when we plow, we plow only one side. Right. So it would fall over. Okay. And then if you had to turn around, there's also a spot. Mm -hmm. area. Yep. Um, I would say, yeah, I mean, Alan said that he would be okay with it. He thinks he could plow it if he could be done, for sure. Um, and that, again, that may be part of the crown issue. It may not be that it even requires a crown. We want to, they want to, you know, sheet everything over so that clearly it's kind of going in one direction. Mm -hmm. Because they've got a, a stone wall on the other side of the stone, right? Yeah, there's a stone wall right there. Uh, but we wouldn't want to plow stuff to anything. We want to take it all over the bank. So it can definitely, uh, I think there would be a spot for the snow. I'm sure we can figure it out. Uh, they're down at the bottom, and there's a connection to the other direction, but there's a, that large ditch that I showed you with the rock line. You could probably take some of the snow over there, too, and get it the top. So I think, again, Alan said he would, he would be able to plow it, um, and that's where we're taking the snow along. Get us some copies of the other. Yeah, I'll send you the digital. I'll send the email. Uh, you know, I have our own um, Any further discussions with the board? I mean, I think just, you know, it's important for us to um, continue to stay with. You know, on, on upgrades like this is to make sure that we are being consistent in what we've done in the past. Um, and it's no different than a, um, a house, housing development that might be put in tomorrow, making sure that roads are, are properly constructed to code, or if we were taking over a water or sewer line or something like that, we would be asking for the same specification. So. I mean, my personal opinion is, is that the road would have to be to a class three status to get the class three status. So um, uh, it would be helpful to kind of know what the cost versus revenue trade off would be. Um, and I know that any, pretty much any road we have in the town is a, is a loser all the time anyways, but uh, it'd be nice to kind of know what that number would look like. <clears throat> and also the number well, how much the improvements that would have to be done to the road before it could be classified, change classification rather, how much that is going to be, that's a you know, significant amount of money for the property. Well, I mean, it looks like it's, you know, the road width would have to be to meet the code. Um, you got the cul-de-sac at the end and then some yeah, of the... Yeah, some of the road so at 24 feet is probably the Yeah, that's probably Right. I, I, I think it's off off the seat. Yes, I think. Probably one of the criteria of why it's a class four road, right? I mean, well, you know, again, it, it all started 46 years ago when it was being taken care of. I'm Sultan D, as the town road, when I spoke to Carol Slack at the time, yes, it was John Curley out. 
sold it to me that way. It was done for a year and a half until the 73 storm. And it went right and further up the road, I will upset because they were working up from Camp Brook up. And they were doing our driveway. They got it in. And when Carol came and said, oh, you know, uh, Greg was saying that it's not. And then, you know, we weren't here. Uh, the fight, a lot of things. We, we were back and forth a lot of things at one point in time. We had plans to eventually come up here. My wife had put the creek house, we put that all together when that was a wreck by Mary Arnold. And uh, so we had plans. Things changed on my life. I worked for a company that ran into the third generation and they sold everything. So it kind of changed everything for us. So my daughter said, you know, when it came through, we weren't up here that much. And they said, oh, you know, it's not a class three road. My attorneys, the daughter said, well, you know, you screwed up, you should have fought it. Because it was sold to you, it was taken care of by the town. You know, if they were up there all the time, there were never any issues. So, but again, other things came about that caused us those problems. So we had huge boulders in that process. It sounds like we have, you know, there are some of these, you know, cul-de-sac or potential armoring of the edges of the road in those areas that probably could be taken care of rather easily without a huge cost to the landowner. But it seems like at the end of the day, it will come down to what the road width is if it's impossible to make it a 24-foot road and it's a 16 to 18-foot road, you know. Is there any road in town now? 24 to zero. I don't know. I don't think so. Right. No. Yeah, I think you're repeating. I think the point you're trying to make is, again, and this is kind of what I would try to make too, is that we're working off of. New roads. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, but well, new, 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 right here. new well, it's new class three. Right? Yeah. So that's where it's a little bit tricky. What standard do you hold it to? It's an old road, yeah, but. The town, the whole intent of this is that the town's not going to take something over, it's going to be cost prohibitive, they're going to take a lot of maintenance. But also on the other side, it's an old road, should it meet all the same criteria? We do have roads in town, I can't tell you what the name of them are, but I've been on a couple of roads, a couple, and the other probably knows you better, but it's probably not 24 foot of, of travel weight, and gravel to gravel, it's not 24 foot wide. But the thing that, no, and I'm just playing devil's advocate because, I mean, you know, this road has been in place for, you know, for decades. Um, but who's to say that if we if we granted this one that was put in 30, 40 years ago, um, but let's say a new homeowner goes and builds a house tomorrow and builds it, you know, sort of like yours, it doesn't meet all the specs, then they would be entitled for that as well. You know, and you, and you, you, know, you start that, where does it end from there? And again, yeah, you go back to the intent of this is to, to protect the town right. the taxpayers from taking something that would be, that would not, not be the same and it might cost money um, where it would not otherwise be built to a higher standard. That's the whole idea. All of our roads are, are called town roads, but different classifications. I, I mean, class four road is, is a town road. It is. Yeah. But, it, but it's just a different classification. Right. Exactly. So I'm saying that uh, if he bought a house that was called a town road, it could have been a class four road at that time too. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened way back then. Or maybe they didn't have classifications at that point. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, it might not have been there. Right. But I don't know what class. Actually. Yeah, maybe we should see that because that's, that's a house up on top of it. It's been a long time.
I know the Class 4 road committee, they found this, because this road, that your road, is not on um, the, the state maps, but the Class 4 road committee did research whatever they had done before, I can have them here, but um, they did verify that that was a Class 4, a valid Class 4 road, mm -hmm. that your road has. So, um, and to your point, when we were right, I mean, I don't, I don't know what they were asking. If you were told that it was a, a town highway, well, I mean, they're all town highways, but. When we, when we go at it again, so I would try. I wasn't coming up before we had rest and didn't have that much, you know. When we got up here, I went to Red Stone Bucky Shop and put a couple of old wagons. That's how we got up and down back then. Uh, but it was, it's how it was sold to us, it's how it was maintained. There were never any issues. Uh, and because of those circumstances, as I said, we better get away from us. We didn't fight it. Well, I think we need to take a look at those numbers for maintenance, potential maintenance costs and whatnot. And yeah, I mean, I'm not ready to make a decision. I'm just making a, you know, I'll just do it our total one mile for class three road if you'll have our name and just run the numbers and see if we can at least get a third of close. Do we want to, uh, <clears throat> do we want to put this back on for the next meeting to make a decision on and get whatever information that we need between now and two weeks from now, that would be the, uh, what is that first? 11? 11? Yeah. Right. I don't know, we're uh, the I gave you the password first. It's the 10th. Yeah. The 10th? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll put it back on for the 10th and make our decision then. That's unfair. Do you want revenue or any expenses? And, and maybe just um, for just the rest of your slides yeah. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How stringent is the, the state with the, on the revenue side reimbursing us? Yeah. You'll, no, you'll, they, leave it, they really leave it up to you. They do. For class three, especially. Class one, they're going to be involved for sure. Yeah. Class yeah. three. Yeah. You're not going to put them on. No, no, we got to take tons of form. No, but they, don't, they you know, they, you know, they just throw you a little bit of cash. It's yeah. at that yeah. point they don't even care where you put it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Any other anything else on that topic tonight? Well, thank you for the presentation, Greg. Yeah. I'm sorry. That I didn't know. <coughs> all right. Evaluations are coming up. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the Lily's uh, added item number three, which is Lilysville Bridge contract. Yeah, so this is, um, we bridge number, uh, I think it's 33, uh, it's, it's Lilysville Road. Yep. Uh, we had to rebuild a main wall that is falling over there. It's, it's, it's all game uh, So we went out to bid on that, and we, we got a main bidder of the River Bridges. They want to bid it, and this is just a contract. Uh, we did come in below uh, our anticipated budget, so um, we we'll save a little money on it. Full place. Uh, this yeah. actually, the it's majority of this, ninety percent of this comes through uh, the uh, structures grant, uh, mm -hmm. the structures grant. Uh, they don't pay for the majority of it, but our math is ten percent. It's mm -hmm. going to be less than that. So uh, I just need to have you give me the authority to just sign this contract. Um, was there, the out there who were not watching, but did there end up being a, a uh, time of closure period or anything like that? There is. Yeah. So they get so many days to do the work? Or yes. It's all over the contract. They're given, I think it was four weeks to get the, we're going to close the whole road now for four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm doing a, a free con meeting with them soon and we're going to know that date they're going to start so we can let everybody that does as long as they already know that they're going to have to get around there. They're going to close the road down for, for no, more than four, no more than four weeks. That's what's in the contract. And, and how will the uh, the public know about the road closure? Is We're it going, going to, be... to mail out everybody that's in that general area. We will mail to them directly. It will be on Facebook. It will be on our website. Uh, we put it in the newspaper. <laughs> and when's the anticipated start date? I don't know. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we've got a window. We can only be in the creek for a certain amount of time. Uh, I'm guessing it'll start probably within the next two to three weeks, depending on how quickly the contract can mobilize. Two to 
three weeks? Okay. Yeah, two to three weeks. Uh, I'll know more after my brief on meeting, which I believe is going to be later this week. Uh, we'll know exactly what day tomorrow will happen. So, so we'll get some notice out to the people we'll get two weeks ahead of time. Or something like that. Plus, we'll have it on our, on our social media places. Okay. Plus, a road will be posted. The road will be posted too. Yep. Yeah, so everybody will have, and they're going to allow local traffic in too. It's, you know, it's really only shut down in one small area, but they're going to allow local traffic to have to get to the houses. They don't have to cross the construction site. Right. We don't want them in. There's no reason to take them or the cable running. So, right. Where is this bridge? So, um, High Bridge. High Bridge. High Bridge. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, they did an inspection a few years ago on one of the walls. It's just, it's just gone. It's just fallen away from the whole structure. So, they're going to get in. They're going to repair that and do some work underneath it and try to show it. So, I just need that. Is someone second? I'll second. All right. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. I see you left out a spot for yourself on here. Great. We had a conversation. <laughs> we agreed that I was going to do my report at first meeting of the month. All right. So just to follow up on one thing, tax stabilization information we yeah. talked about. Yeah. Maybe, maybe at the next meeting or something. Yeah, I will. I have some really good information about the one that they did at uh, Hyde Park. Yeah. Uh, it's a four page policy that they did. It's, it's pretty clear. It's easy to figure out. Um, you know, at uh, was it Rochester Randolph? Anyway, the other one I looked for is a little more difficult to read through. But I've got a little bit. And we have select board meeting minutes from the 23rd and the 13th to get approved. Sounds like, Lisa, your streak's over, maybe? Could be. Yeah. Um, I move we accept the um, select board minutes of July 23rd and August 13th as written. Second. All will second. Yeah, I'll second. Yeah, I'm going to go easy on it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Paul slash Moonlight. Yes. Hey, everybody have a chance to look at the constable report? It didn't look like there was a whole lot of action going on. Well, the question I had about that the training, two days of training. Is that something that's shared by the three towns? The cost of yes, yeah. yeah, so what happened? We actually had to go home and stay in a hotel. Yeah. Uh, so we paid for the class and they paid for the hotel. And our portion came off that to the other two towns. How about his hours though? Does he get paid for going to training? So that should get split by the yeah, I'll show you on that. It, it, looks, it looks like he's recorded on his Bethel sheet the nine and a half and, and 12 hours for the two days. Yeah, I'll check his time though. Yeah. We'll see how we should at least be split. Sure. Three, well, three well, ways. Three ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Other than that, everything seemed to be pretty quiet because he was out of town. Um, I will say that um, so I stopped at <coughs> Cockadoogles. Might have been yesterday. But about 4.30 in the afternoon, I can tell you that the traffic was buzzing down the street for a pretty good clip. Um, it wasn't just one individual. It, was, it seemed like it was moving right along. Mm -hmm. Granted, it always seems around, what, 4.35 o'clock? The parking stalls open up, and it's mm -hmm. easier to navigate, but it seemed mm -hmm. like the traffic was really whipping through there. Um, at the same time, I didn't notice that the... Uh, the radar sign was working at yeah, that time. Either. One of the the town. Not or is, is, yeah, is. So we go now, it is. Yeah. But it just seemed like they were moving around at a pretty good clip that I didn't seem to notice that before. But. We came through at 2 o'clock today, and most of the traffic is straddling the yellow line. Yeah. We, we did get the statistics back, the, the number of data from the uh, traffic counter things. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting that the average speed was 24. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah so we can reduce it one? So we'll see. Well, what we want to do is this spring. Uh, I want to have uh, two rivers back out here and do it before we place the, the, the bull wells back out there mm -hmm. and see what we get. So you have a piece of fair data. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they definitely are coming at a pretty good clip because, I mean, that, the crosswalk right, right in front of the bank there, in some ways it's a little blind at times because you're coming around, you know, the downtown has got the slight curvature and you get all the cars on the street. And some of those cars are coming pretty fast and they don't see the pedestrians until the pedestrians are out in the road. And I've seen a few of them. I wouldn't say slam on the brakes, but put some hard brakes on. Well, we, but they we shouldn't have been meeting. doing, they're probably doing 25, 30 anyways. I had a meeting with um, the, the BRA people and uh, AARP, and we're going to, AARP has given us some additional, um, some tape that we're going to put out, some reflective tape to put around the whole house to kind of make it more visible. And then they're looking at putting in a budget of those um, sort of scotches that, that are they're flexible, but they say um, state law. Yield to the entry and crosswalk, mm -hmm. they're like for us for the green. Uh, they're going to buy some of those doors also. Are those the ones that go in the middle of the road? No. Well, they can, but these can be not on the whole Because I was going to say, if you put them in the middle of yeah. the road, but yeah. traffic yeah. cross, and those <laughs> things aren't going to be there for you. Yeah, because those little planters just didn't last. Well, they they last. even the ball box in front of Mills Hardware, I mean, you, they, okay. you don't, you can't even tell what they're there. Right? Yeah, without the planter on, on it. On the other day. Well, we had the planter on it. So you're the one that took out the planter? Uh, I didn't know. No, no, no. These will be mounted onto that, and they're yeah. flexible, so they're more visible. Yeah. That's the problem. There's no planter that's knocked off or something. Right. Not the dry planter. So these are forest and green, and they should be. They're flexible, so if they get hit, they'll pop yeah, back exactly. up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they won't pull the whole thing up as much. But you think the whole process like for like for us? No, it's uh, getting too commercial. Like, yeah. oh, that's kind Put of up a scarecrow, then people will think yeah. somebody's there. <laughs> how, about, how about one of those three-dimensional holes that aren't really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do the, you know, now they, I've seen in some states, they do that three-dimensional crosswalk, because it's supposed to makes it three dimensions so that you slow down faster or something, but hmm. we've seen those. Well, these things that AARP are going to see if they can get their budget, no quarters more I did, I have noticed that it seems like the traffic's going yeah. well, you're faster lately. And, well, there's a lot more folks in town too, just, you know, for example, at the, at the bar. Friday night down there at the bar, this last Friday night, best night they've ever had and it's all law students coming back in town and I mean there's a lot of traffic. Which is good. Oh, it's I mean, all good, good for business but oh, yeah. you know it's all good. Yeah. A little yeah, yeah, you know, the only one guy pedestrian uh, We actually yeah. had I had out on um, uh, where was he at? We had somebody the last Danny and uh, uh, yeah. uh, had a little bit of, of presence out there so he spent a little time out there too. Mm -hmm. Did he write any tickets up that direction? Or? I, I didn't see anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I didn't even remember even seeing Most anything. Most people are driving yeah. 40 up on Christian Hill, and that's 25. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Can't we can use three or four more of these guys out there. You know, mm -hmm. This one guy, he's stuff. So we get some more speed signs, some digital speed signs, we get a trailer or something like that, and it can actually another, mm -hmm. you know, some more presence that it doesn't yep. We'll see. All right. And other communications, uh, solid waste board information from their August meeting was on here. Was it? I didn't get one. I yeah. three copies in March, oh, right. So that's probably why <laughs> I didn't get one. I'm sorry. I'm surprised. No, actually, yeah, I, it's I, in July. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I haven't seen one yet. No, it's August 8th. Was it? August 8th? Yeah, or August 8th. But yeah, the top says August 8th, and then oh, it says but minutes then the for July says, 11th. No, it's oh, no, minutes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was August. Anything else come out of there, Mo? Or? Did you folks get a chance to talk about the logistics of the Green Lantern project at all? Or was that, you think that was no, uh, coming up? No, Sandy wants us to vote on it again. But no, I mean, the, who's going to be coordinating? <laughs> The whole, I mean, it's a done deal at this no, point. No, so. that was after our last meeting that, that we talked mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So our next meeting will be. What would you, what would you guys, what would the group be voting on? 
Yeah, we, we voted it down. Sandy wanted to vote on it again. To support it. To, to support, support it. it, yeah. It's, it doesn't matter. It's a non-home. Yeah, once it's failed, it's failed. It's failed. But yeah. it's nothing to, we're just a, so, we're just a. So, it, so if, if, the, if the facility itself doesn't, doesn't agree to maybe help coordinate some of those events, then it will be up to the two towns to figure out someone to be a right. point of contact out there, right, right. Paul? No, right. So, right, yeah, right, now it'd be, right now it would be Chet, because he's the. So it sounds like right now that the joint board really doesn't want to be a part of the project in some way. Is that? No. No? Okay. It's immaterial whether we are for it or against it, because we're just a, we're just a, well, in some ways nothing. it is. I mean, if, if, if you don't. We're just a tenant. Yeah, but you're in charge of chat. We're in charge of ch chat, and, and chat can coordinate the traffic going out, in and out of there during their construction, because it can't, it can't uh, interfere with our daily flow of traffic in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, I know. But what I about just, like off off time too? You get you got the times where it'll have to be accessible for them. Yeah, days that close. When you're closed. You know, right, the gate will just be open for them. And sometimes it's probably nice to have somebody in there to right. see what's going on, make sure. Well, okay. I'm just I'm just you know playing the devil's advocate. If something happens, if there's some kind of an incident, who is the contact person there? Or do we have to, the towns have to appoint somebody to be a, you know, a general, uh, general manager, facilitator of the project or something like that to be able to. Chet's the head guy down there, so it would be up to him, I guess. Mm -hmm. Lots of other ones. Yeah. Do you guys talk anything more about the annual order? No. Where are you at? Chet was supposed to come up with. Uh, what it was going to cost, you know, for insurances and stuff like that. What our what our cost was going to be, so we could see what we've got to do. Okay, so you yep. Okay. Do you guys have a timetable of when when you think you'll have that information? Because no, I'm assuming at that time it's going to come to the boards, right? Yeah, at that time it's got to be between both boards. Right. So maybe late fall. Probably before that. Okay. I would hope. Well, you guys only meet once a month, right? Once a month. <laughs> yeah, it'll be September, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Any other business? Anybody, anything else bring up this time? David, anything? <coughs> Paul? Nope, I'm good. Only? Mo? All right. Our movie going to executive session over uh, personal issues. Okay. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. All right.